What's up? Mr. Allen here. We're going to find the area of this shaded region here. Now, the inscribed polygon is a regular pentagon and the circle has a radius of eight inches. Now, regular polygons can be inscribed in circles. And what that means is each vertex lies on the circle. And this is a perfect illustration of that. All right. Now, we got to find all these little pieces. Okay. And that seems to be rather challenging. But with any good shaded region problem, usually our approach is find the area of the larger part and subtract out the area of the smaller. So it looks like we need to find the area of a circle and we're going to subtract the area of the pentagon. So there we go. There's our goals. So I think let's find the area of the circle first, shall we? Let's do it. So the area of the circle, that's pi times my radius squared. Do I have my radius? Yes, I do. How wonderful. So my area of the circle is pretty straightforward. It's going to be eight squared there. So I'm going to get 64 pi and that's going to be inches squared for the area of my circle. We're good with that. Put that in our back pocket, save it for later. The real stuff is about to happen when we're finding the area of this regular pentagon. So how in the heck are we gonna go about this? Well, first up, how about I draw in a radius here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and draw this in from center to the edge of the circle there. And I'm gonna pick a spot where it's gonna be hitting one of the vertices of that pentagon. And perhaps I should actually just draw one over here as well, don't you think? So that way I can create this uh, this isosceles triangle here with the two radii are congruent, right? So that'd be an isosceles triangle by definition. Is there anything else that I could figure out here? Well, these are gonna be eight and eight, right? Inches and inches. Two tick marks means inches, one tick mark means feet. Um, could I figure out my central angle here? Perhaps, how would I do that? Well, there's 360 degrees in a circle, I've got five central angles because I have five sides. And if I divide 360 by five, that is 72 degrees. So this is 72 degrees. Now, the area of a regular polygon, I didn't jot that down. Why don't we do that? Area equals one half multiplied by my apothem times my perimeter. And as we've often done, I need the apothem, I need that perimeter, I'll jot that down as like my goals, right? Well. I don't have either of those, you know? Um, so let's drop in um, the apothem here, right? So if I take that, I'm gonna go from the center and perpendicular to the side of that regular polygon. That is my apothem here. This is gonna be a right angle. Um, <clears throat> is there anything else I can get here? Well, hold up, Zach, hold up. 72 is my central angle, and if that apothem, um, which is an altitude of an isosceles triangle, that's gonna bisect that central angle. So I'm gonna get 36 degrees here. So what I'm really dealing with is a triangle, and I'll go ahead and draw a separate triangle, a right triangle here. What I'm dealing with is a right triangle that is a 36 degree angle up here. I want my apothem right there and I know my hypotenuse is eight inches, right? So that's the information I have. Could I get my apothem from this? And also if I want my perimeter, I think I'm going to need that side length down there as well. Well, I'm thinking that a little bit of trigonometry is gonna be involved here, you know what I'm saying? A little Sokotoa action. So let's go ahead and label these sides based off of what we know. Well, my angle is 36, so I'm looking at it from there, right? Uh, my hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, so that's my hypotenuse. Next to it's my adjacent, and then um, across from it would be my opposite, OPP, yeah, you know me. All right, there we go, we're ready, we're set, let's go. So to find my apothem, which is my adjacent side, and I know my hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, that's gonna be cosine. So I'm gonna have cosine of 36 is equal to my adjacent, which I don't know, over my hypotenuse, which is eight. This one's a pretty straightforward way of going about um, solving for A. I'm just gonna do eight times the cosine of 36, and then we're gonna plug that into our TI-84 plus graphing calculator. Oh, wonderful, I happen to have one right here. That's great, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna do, eight multiplied by the cosine of 36. And we do wanna make sure that this is in degree mode. Let's see what kind of answer we get here. Enter, boom, that's beautiful, all right? If you are getting a different answer, you're gonna to wanna to hit mode and then take a look at the, it says radian right there. We don't want radian. If you're getting like a weird number, you're, you're in radian mode. Switch it over to, to degree, hit enter, and then you can hit second and mode again, which will quit out of it. So I've got that length, that is my apothem. Let's go ahead and write that down. So I'm gonna have, 6.4721, and I'm just gonna put the dot, dot, dot after that saying, hey, it's going on forever, at least I can find it in my calculator, okay? So there we go with that. Now, 
my perimeter. I need to find out my perimeter. So that means that I need to get that opposite side X, right? So for that one, I'm going to set up a separate trig function. So if that's my opposite and I know my hypotenuse, that's going to be sine. So Katoa. So I'm going to have sine of 36 is equal to my opposite, which is X divided by my hypotenuse, which is eight. Algebra is going to be the same. I'm going to multiply by eight on both sides and I'll have eight sine of 36 is equal to X. Let's figure out what that is in my calculator. I'm gonna have eight times the sine of 36, 36, boom, diggity, close those parentheses, excellent. Okay, so that's what X is, all right? Now that is only this portion of my side. That's only this portion right here. If I want my perimeter, I'm gonna need to double that to get the full side length of that pentagon and then multiply that by five to get the total perimeter. So I'm just gonna double it and then I will multiply that guy by the five sides. If you multiply by 10, that's cool too. I showed it separate. So my perimeter here is 47.0228, 47.0228. And change. Now I can plug all of this, all of this into my formula. So I'm going to have the area is equal to one half multiplied by my apothem, which is 6.4721 and change, times my perimeter, which is 47.0228 and change. Let's plug that all in. So let's see what we got here. We've got the 0.5 multiplied by, and it, unfortunately, my calculator won't allow me to arrow up, but if yours arrows up, you can do that and select the 47.022, but I'm going to type it in, and then you'll also multiply by the 6.47213595, and again, you can arrow up in your calculator if it has that capability, and then hit enter once they're highlighted, and it will automatically put it down there. Unfortunately, with this one, I had to type them all in. No big deal though, you have the time, right? I can just hit pause on the video. Hit enter and boom, there is my area. Now it's time to round. I'm gonna do two decimal places since it did not specify. That is 152.169, I'm gonna jot that down, 152, one sec, areas of 152.169 and change, so that was 152.17. All right, and that's the area of the regular polygon. So actually, I think I got ahead of myself on rounding here because, yo, we ain't done, right? It wanted the shaded region. I'm going to backtrack on that one. We're going to leave it unrounded for now. So I've got this area here of my regular pentagon, right? But don't forget about this bad boy right here. I need to take the area of my circle, which is 64 pi, and subtract that 152.169. So let's grab that calculator again. I'm going to have 64 pi, so hit second, and that caret button has pi. Hit enter, all right? And we're going to subtract the 152, 152, and again, you could arrow up if you'd like, 169.0426, hit enter, 48.89288, so 48.89, 48.89, 48.89 inches squared is my final answer for the area of that shaded region. Holy guacamole, that is a beast of a problem right there. One of the most challenging, I'd say, of these regular polygons and finding areas of shaded regions because area of a regular polygon when you don't have special right triangles and you have to use trig, that's a whole thing, man. It's a whole thing. But we made it through it. It was dope. It was awesome. I hope you thought it was awesome too. Remember kids, YORO, right? Almost got ahead of myself. Well, we don't want to YORO. It's not YORO. You only round twice. It's you only round once. We got to stick to that. All right. See you later.